All right, so before we get into the actual content of the video, I wanna make sure you click on that subscribe button below so you can become part of this community. I'm gonna be sharing other videos like this that, that might not be about how to pass an exam, but it certainly will be around the Lean Six Sigma practice, okay? So if you're interested in this type of content, make sure you click on that subscribe button below. I want you to also go over to chadburrows.com, check out my website there, because there will be extra resources, including my blog there. All right, so for this video though, all about the ASQ exam. If you don't know what ASQ is, it's the American Society for Quality. The black belt is a certified Lean Six Sigma black belt or a certified Six Sigma black belt. And the reason ASQ is such a coveted, I guess, organization to get their, to get a certification through is because they're typically, or fundamentally, they're known around the world. And once you say you have an ASQ black belt, you really don't need to explain it any further. It'd be like you saying, I graduated from Harvard. Okay, great. Well, it does. you don't really need to say anything else. You don't need to sell your school, right? Everybody knows that Harvard is a good school. Same thing with ASQ. When you say, I have an ASQ black belt, then you don't really need to sell it anymore. Everybody knows you went, you, you know, you did your, you paid your due diligence. So the materials that I used to pass the exam, the handbook, Six Sigma Black Belt Handbook, very good uh, book to use. I use it to study as well as take the uh, exam. The Six Sigma Black Belt Primer by the Quality Council of Indiana and the solutions text that goes along with that. Now you might be saying, why do you need a solutions text? Well, what happens is if you just get the primer, right? If you just get if you just get this book, it comes with this uh, these questions in there, which are fantastic, by the way. People love these things. I, did, I unfortunately I didn't get, I didn't get to go through all of those, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. But it only comes with these uh, the answer key here, and so you can see there's not a lot there, right? It just tells you if you got the answer right or wrong. It doesn't go into the solutions of why it's right or wrong. So they've come out with this uh, solutions text that goes through the detail of each one of those questions and tells you why a question is right or wrong. These books, the primer and the solutions text, I used more during the study time. The handbook I actually used more on the exam. Um, it just was more helpful to me. Uh, you, you might find it differently, but that's what I did. Um, now, I've seen where people have posted that they used all types of books. I mean, they had, you know, they're walking in there with basically, you know, a, two book packs full of uh, books. And I just, I, I didn't need it that much. It may be because I've been doing this for so long. In fact, you may be asking yourself, Chad, if you've been working in Lean Six Sigma for over a decade, why did you need to study at all? Good question. Um, and I thought my, to myself the same thing until I picked up the material about three weeks out and realized it's the way they're asking the questions that you need to become familiar with. And you, and so, you know, one thing is this is the this is basically the body of knowledge for a Six Sigma black belt. And I would argue not many people know all of this. So when you're taking an exam like the ASQ exam that uh, is 150 questions and you only have about 1.3 minutes per question at four hours total, then you want to make sure that you know how to look up answers quickly. And so what I'm going to share with you now is how I did that. If you'll notice in each one, in, in this book particular, I have these tabs, these green tabs. I've indexed the back of the book. So basically the index is indexed. The red tabs, I didn't even use. At first I was trying to go through and, and tab like, defin, um, not definitions, uh, formulas and things like that, but I didn't really use it at all. The green tabs, however, invaluable, and I would suggest you do the same. For example, if I needed to know, let's say I was looking up a question on the exam that was about OEE, then I would want to quickly look up OEE well, if I had to go to the back of the book without having my tabs, essentially I'm, I'm gonna have to fumble through all of this and see how the word, the print's really small. Well, with my tabs and the way I set this up was if I wanted to know about OE, I find the O tab and I flip really quickly to the O section and there it is. And what you'll also notice is that I've highlighted each one of the sections. So I basically basically just took a highlighter and separated like where in where the you know in ended and O began, I separated and then wrote O. Alright, where M and N ended or M ended and N began, I highlighted that area and wrote N. Why did I do that? Because when you're when you're looking at small print and you're you're taking a timed exam, time is of the essence. So you want to make sure you're able to quickly go through, find what you need, and get to the answer you're looking for. And again, um, you know, don't rely on the open book test. You know, it's 
to me, people get stuck on that a lot of times when you think it's open book. And then you you second guess some of your answers and you might say, well, I can look that up really quickly. Well, if you do that for all of them, eventually what happens is you run out of time. Now, I talked about the primer, right? This book right here, right? It's very, it's a nicely tabbed book, but it's tabbed for like DMAIC, like define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Those big sections are tabbed, but if you need something really quickly, it's still difficult. So what I did was, and this is another great trick, I took the index out of the book, out of the primer, and put them in its own book. And then I tabbed it just like I did in the handbook. So again, using the same example, if I wanted to find something out about OEE, let's say the question asked about a formula or something related to OEE, I would find that tab, flip it. Now notice I didn't notice how I tabbed it. I didn't tab it like this, so I have to flip back. Again, time, right? I literally flipped it. So when I pulled that tab, it took me straight to the O section. Again, time is of the essence. And then again, what you'll notice is here, I've highlighted those as well. All in an attempt to save time. Some people say put formula sheets in there. I came up with a formula sheet myself, but I never used it. Um, I just used the book if I needed a formula. To be honest with you, I didn't need the, that that much. When you go into the exam, you can only go in with a very basic calculator. So I, I, I had bought this one to take with me, but believe it or not, I left it at home. There's also a calculator on the screen if you need that. But again, it takes time to click the button and for the calculator to pop up and all that. You, you want to bring your own calculator. The idea I'm trying to get across is, is that when you take the ASQ Blackboard exam, you need to understand that time is of the essence and you, you cannot rely solely on the material to go through. You need to know a lot of it uh, just by reading the questions. And listen, they do a good job. ASQ, those guys and gals over there did a great job of forming the questions in a way that uh, are very clear in what they want, but you need to know the content in order to answer the question. So my next tip is the 30, 60, 90 rule. The 30, 60, 90 rule says that on the first pass of any test, you go through and answer all the ones you know. Any question that would take you longer than 30 seconds to answer, you skip it. On the second pass, any question that takes you longer than 60 seconds, you skip it. And then you guessed it on the third pass is 90 seconds. I, I do use that rule as if I do it a little differently. For the ASQ exam, what I did was, on the first pass, I answered every one that I knew, just like the 30, 60, 90 rule, except it shouldn't take you 30 seconds. I mean, the way the questions are written and the way the answers are written, it should only take you about 15 to 20 seconds to answer those questions. And, and, and then you might not get, know a lot of them. You might, only know, you might only know 25 or 30, right? You know for sure 25 or 30. Any question that has a formula or a graph in it, skip it. A chart, graph, anything like that, just skip it. Do those on the second pass, on the third pass. So the way I did it was, First pass, I answered all the ones that I knew. I knew that I knew them. It was about 30. On the second pass, I went through and answered ones that were that I didn't know, but didn't have a formula or chart in it. And then so I, they were easy to look up, faster to look up. I knew no, no calculations were involved. That the only thing involved was using my tab. The third pass, I used to answer calculations and charts. And then on the fourth pass, I used to go back through and answer any ones I hadn't answered because I just didn't know the answer. And there are only about four or five of those. And what I always do, it's been a rule of thumb of mine ever since way back when I took the GMAT, is that any answer I don't know, I go through and answer, or select the same uh, letter for each one. So for example, I always select C. I don't know why, it's just what I've always done. So on the ASQ exam, I think there were four or five that I didn't know, and I just selected C, 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 C. The idea behind that is, is maybe you, you get lucky and get one of those right. All right, so that's it. I give you my study materials. I give you my tricks, my tips. That's it for this video again. Click on the subscribe button below. If you did like this video, click on the like button as well. Share it with friends, family, colleagues, or anyone that you think might get value out of this, especially if they're going to take the ASQ exam, or if you think someone is in this line of work who just wants to learn more about Lean Six Sigma and how this field of study can really propel your career. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.